Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. PayPal has dropped out of the alliance that is trying to launch Facebook's digital currency, Libra. A man has been able to move all four of his paralyzed limbs with a mind-controlled exoskeleton suit. No, we're not early to the April Fool's jokes of 2020. Microsoft is really making a new mobile phone that has two screens and runs Android. And Canada's busiest airport will soon be using artificial intelligence powered technology to detect weapons. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. PayPal has dropped out of the alliance that is trying to launch Facebook's digital currency, Libra. PayPal made the announcement in a statement on Friday, but did not specify what had prompted the decision. Libra and its digital wallet, Calibra, were revealed by Facebook in June. But the cryptocurrency has been criticized by regulators, and both France and Germany have pledged to block it from Europe. PayPal said it remains supportive of Libra's aspirations, but had chosen to focus on its own core businesses. The firm was one of the original members of the Libra Association, a group of 28 companies and nonprofits helping to develop Libra. Its other members include payments company Visa, ride hailing app Uber, and humanitarian charity Mercy Corps. In response to PayPal's withdrawal, Libra Association said that it was aware that attempts to reconfigure the financial system would be hard. Quote, commitment to that mission is more important to us than anything else, it said in a statement. We're better off knowing about this lack of commitment now, end quote. At its unveiling this year, Facebook said that people would be able to make payments with the currency via its own apps as well as on messaging service WhatsApp. Partner firms would also be able to accept Libra for transactions. Facebook said Libra would be independently managed and backed by real assets and that paying with it would be as easy as, as texting. The group of seven advanced economies warned in July that it would not let Libra proceed until all regulatory concerns had been addressed. Central bank chiefs, including the U.S.'s or the UK's Mark Carney have also voiced skepticism and US President Donald Trump has tweeted that he's not a fan of the currency. The Libra Association will hold its first meeting of its governing body, the Libra Council, on the 14th of October. The group said in a tweet that it planned to share updates soon afterwards about, quote, 1,500 entities that have indicated enthusiastic interest to participate, end quote. How interesting. This yeah. is an interesting story because I was just reading today that um, some of the American politicians are telling Visa, if you stay involved, mm. this is going to be highly scrutinized. Oh. Sure. So do you want to continue? And so it's there's a lot of scrutiny over Libra. And I mean, I, I know I've said in, in the past, like, I, I think this is not a great idea simply because of the issues Facebook has had. So the, you get them right. attached to it and it's going to immediately open the door to privacy concerns Except or how is it going to be used. And I know it's not just Facebook, yeah, but, but I it. think that plays in, as an undercurrent of fear. If it mm -hmm. wasn't Facebook involved, would people be more open to it? Mm -hmm. And that's the big thing. Like Cryptocurrency backed by so many companies in general, I think, is a, like governments would be uh, hesitant because sure. they, they lose the control over their own economy. That's yeah. true. And that means they lose the control over fair trade and, yep. and other you know, like the, what what would a government do if suddenly they lost all control of the currency? Well, yeah, uh, yeah for sure. I mean, true. if you figure, you know, you've got trading on the, the actual stock market of currency, and if suddenly there's a run on, uh, you know, American currency, say, and people are like, you know, I want to invest in Libra instead, and mm -hmm. nationalities are then going with the cryptocurrency, like the U.S. dollar crashes, that impacts the 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 whole economy. Yeah. So there's a whole reason for wanting to keep things from a, a monetary standpoint stable. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So I, I, do, I do get it. I do get the concern. It's funny because I would, I would think personally because of Facebook's issues, I would have less confidence. But then knowing that Visa is partnered, then that brings up right. the confidence. It's like Visa has this, I have this comfort in, 
in the security of Visa. So I'm like, They've okay, well. They've branded themselves well, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they really have. They <laughs> They're really, really have. just all about the interest. But, it, <laughs> but what's interesting to me is that I think that because it's Facebook and so many people who aren't as well educated in the privacy issues, mm. they probably are excited about it because it's Facebook. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, perhaps, yeah. So oh, this is going to be integrated into WhatsApp. Right. So, yeah. hey, that's a great feature, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, there's definitely that, too. Um, I think it's just the natural evolution of, like, this is a technology that n now exists. Now, obviously, Libra doesn't. I don't, right. we don't yet know, like, we understand that they're going to be using real commodities in order to, s to stabilize the, uh, the currency. Right. But how can a cryptocurrency be stable? That's, like, that's what I'm waiting to find out. Right. And is there going to be no mining of the currency? Like and if yeah. that's the case, how yeah. like how do you you have improve? to acquire it by purchasing it right. with real dollars? Just then. like just like regular currency, which is like you're you're doing the exchange. When I when I have U.S. dollars, I've purchased U.S. dollars from here in Canada. Yeah. So we'll see. And and does PayPal bailing out does that really represent any any impact on Libra, or is it just going to carry on and PayPal's just not going to be a part of it because they're really kind of a competing product and and uh, mm -hmm. cryptocurrency doesn't really fall into what they've really established themselves as which is a fiat based currency mm -hmm. bank basically right. like a, a digital bank and truly like time will tell in five years PayPal is either going to be kicking themselves for getting out yeah, or they're going yeah. to be high-fiving each other for getting out. Like, yeah. we don't know, right? Yeah. We yeah. shall see. Yeah. And we'll be here to report on it, folks. <laughs> That's right. That we will. <laughs> for season 18. <laughs> Unfortunately, our teleprompter has stopped working, but luckily I have the news stories loaded on my laptop. So if you'll excuse me, I'll be looking down to read the news. A man has been able to move all four of his paralyzed limbs with a mind-controlled exoskeleton suit. Tybalt, who does not want his surname revealed, was an optician before he fell 15 meters in an incident at a nightclub four years ago. He says, taking his first steps in an experimental exoskeleton suit felt like being the first man on the moon. His movements, particularly walking, are far from perfect and the robo suit is being used in only the lab. But researchers say the approach could one day improve patients' quality of life. Tybalt had surgery to place two implants on the surface of the brain covering the parts of the brain that control movement. 64 electrodes on each of the implants read the brain activity and beam the instructions to a nearby computer. Sophisticated computer software then reads the brain waves and turns them into instructions for controlling the exoskeleton. The injury to his spinal cord left him paralyzed and he spent the next two years in hospital. But in 2017, he took part in the exoskeleton trial with, the Clinitech, with Clinitech and the University of Grenoble. Initially, he practiced using the brain implants to control a virtual character or avatar in a computer game. And then he moved on to walking in the suit. After two years of not walking, he says he'd actually forgotten how to walk and even lost the perception that he was taller than a lot of people in the room. While he quickly took to controlling the exoskeleton's ability to walk, it took a lot longer to learn how to control the arms. He says, quote, it was very difficult because it is a combination of multiple muscles and movements. This is the most impressive thing that I do with the exoskeleton, end quote. Tybalt does need to be attached to a ceiling harness in order to minimize the risk of him falling over in the exos exoskeleton. It means the device is not yet ready to move outside the laboratory. There are also plans to develop finger control to allow Tybalt to pick up and move objects. But the researchers have to be careful how much data they transmit from the brain to the computer. They have 350 milliseconds to go from thought to movement, otherwise the system becomes difficult to control. There is the future potential to read the brain in, a more, de in more detail using more powerful computers and AI to interpret the information from the brain and the team responsible are keen to continue developing the technology. Using the sensors, Tybalt has also used the implant to control a wheelchair. According to the researchers, their motivation is entirely medical in providing mobility to patients who otherwise would be unable to move. Hmm. That is incredible. I know. 
So, like, let's get this straight. He has, like, sensors in his brain, right. on the surface of his brain, that are reading his, his thoughts to control right. movement. Right. What Incredible. What's impressive about that is the fact that they've been able Everything. to... Everything. Well, yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of things. But the fact that they've been able to isolate the electrical impulses in the brain that signify yeah. those specific movements. Yeah. Like, that in and of itself right. is phenomenal. Or is he training his brain to create new ones? Right. Maybe, to control eh? those, yeah. right? I love that they have the avatar first for him to, like, train on and build confidence <laughs> with. Because yeah. I can't imagine, like, controlling a machine with my mind, but having my body then at risk, right, yes. at the same time, right? Yeah. So it's good okay. to have that level of That's confidence cool. in the situation. It, it, it is interesting, though, that it, it can't be done on board. And that maybe it's just the amount of comp computing power that's required you can't build oh. that into the suit well i'm sure that can be done inevitably through technologies like where technology is that look at yeah. single board computers that have right. like um npus on them neural processing units right that can process data at teraflops and they fit like in your pocket so it could be done it's just maybe they you know they got to start yeah that. you got to start yeah. when you're prototyping it's always bigger and oh, of course, yeah, yeah. and 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 certainly the safety harness of being strapped to the ceiling makes sense yes because like you say you can't imagine what would happen if like he made the wrong thought and it yeah. collapsed on him or something. It's interesting though, because I'm like very safety minded in this thought, and I think um, it would be really good if they implemented this for wheelchairs first. Just like just yeah, by wheelchair. default, like, it works. Just, He's right? And that seems so much more simple than this. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe wheelchairs and maybe transfer devices. And cars. Right? Cars. And ca <laughs> yeah. No. What is cool about this, though, I mean, and you're talking about putting it maybe in wheelchairs, but I'm thinking all the people that have prosthetic limbs, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to take this mm -hmm. technology and go, hey, you know what? So you're missing a part of your arm and a hand. We now have a prosthetic limb. Here's this little implant. You can now control that arm. Oh, like the we're, fact that we're you can getting get there. there. Oh, like yeah. That, but that excites me because uh -huh. you think of... Mm -hmm the the limitations that some people have to deal with it's like okay yeah. well i can't do that this opens up a whole new world oh yeah i love it like i am so excited about this project and what it means for giving life back to people who are hampered in some way or another mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's great cool. I, this is a total good news story and and it's not just about that mobility but just reading like you say the wheelchair is is not moving the body parts it's moving yeah. uh, like a motorized wheelchair yeah. right so like the communication can be with a device it can be with controlling other devices who who knows what they can who, come yeah, up with yeah who knows exactly this mm -hmm. is the world is your oyster when it comes now, to thoughts ideas comment well, I, below i am wondering from a security standpoint mm -hmm. like i'm suddenly thinking about the fact that it's transmitting to a computer <laughs> Could this open up the door to somebody hacking that, so to speak, and taking control of the suit by sending... Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> yeah, but I mean... Yeah, like, I'll send your big brothers in there. <laughs> yeah, but I would hope that in something like this, it's not just about the mobility and what they could do, but they're also building in some security oh. protocols mm -hmm. yeah. for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't covered in the story, but I hope that's the case. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, it's if this gets to, to the point yeah. of being standalone use, it, it could have an impact. Mm -hmm. We'll see what it's happens over the awesome. next several years with this technology, with the with the research that they're putting into it as That's well. So cool. Now we've got to take a quick break. The crypto report and more of this week's top tech stories are coming up. Don't go anywhere. In what serves to confirm we are currently living in the end times, Microsoft has made a new mobile phone that has two screens and runs Android. It would appear Microsoft itself is learning that if at first you don't succeed, there's always Linux. They've announced a forthcoming Android Surface Phone Duo at their annual hardware event, among other dual screen Qualcomm and AMD powered goodies. There is a huge catch. You'll have to wait until Christmas 2020 if you want one of your own. Unlike the Samsung Galaxy Fold, Microsoft's attempt at a folding fond fondle slab pardon me, is quite clearly two screens with a 
chunky 360 degree hinge in the middle, allowing displays to be positioned however you want, as a small tablet, as a closed up device, half open as a book or fully open as a large flat tablet. Those touch screens are each 5.6 inch units, making an 8.3 inch display when opened up fully. While the separate screens will be scoffed at by owners of Samsung and Huawei's forthcoming foldable devices, which use one large continuous bendable display, the Surface monitors should at least be more durable than the disastrous first attempts by Samsung. Surface enthusiast in chief Panos Panay says the company is, quote, partnering with Google to bring the best of Android, end quote. This comes after Microsoft extracted billions of dollars in patent royalty payments out of Android makers until recently and is about to finally bring down the axe on one of its family of mobile Windows operating systems. And this is Android powered by Linux, the open source kernel that Redmond now apparently loves after earlier declaring it a cancer. Quite a turnaround. Linux kernel creator Linus Torvalds said back in 1998, quote, if Microsoft ever does applications for Linux, it means I've won. Well, Linus, you've won. That is awesome. That's yeah. exciting. I mean, well, well done, Linux. Yeah. 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 Um, Just a little bit. <laughs> yes. For the win. Well, it starts to feel like, okay, they... they it was always Windows versus, yeah. and Linux was made out to sound like, oh, only hackers use that. Yeah. Well, and, and Linux, Android is based on Linux, so uh, it's basically powered by Linux. A lot of devices are that you don't even realize, your routers and things like that, your phone, your, your tablets, they're all Linux-based. But Microsoft wanted to have Windows-based tablets. Mm -hmm. Now, to be doing Android is pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change change it up. <laughs> Canada's busiest airport will soon be using artificial intelligence powered technology to detect weapons. The operator of of Toronto's Pearson International Airport says that it has agreed to test the new system developed at an Ivy League American University and marketed by a BC company. Vancouver-based Liberty Defense Holdings Limited says the technology, known as Hexwave, can detect both metallic and non-metallic weapons ranging from guns and knives to explosives. It operates by capturing radar images, then using artificial intelligence to analyze those images for signs of a weapon concealed in bags or under clothing. Liberty says that the technology is not able to recognize facial features and, is therefore, and therefore does not pose a privacy risk, a position experts in the field view with some skepticism. The Greater Toronto Airports Authority, which operates Pearson, says that it will start deploying the technology in the spring of 2020 in a bid to boost security. Dwayne McIntosh, Director of Corporate Safety and Security for the Authority, said, quote, They were trying something that could give us a more definitive look at weapons and plastic explosives that may be coming into airports. When I saw this opportunity, I felt that we had to be part of it, end quote. McIntosh said the exact plans for the pilot project are still underway, but said Hexwave units will be deployed just outside airport terminals in order to pick up on potential threats before they get inside. One of the system's benefits, he said, is that it can be integrated with other airport security features and trigger responses based on what it picks up. Detection of certain weapons, for instance, could automatically trigger doors to lock or sound specific alarms. Pearson Airport is not the only location. The Metro Toronto Convention Centre has also signed as a test site. See, I like that last point about locking down doors. Yes. And yeah. Think about schools or something. Mm -hmm. like, the, like, just the idea behind that. As, as frightening as that is and how we don't want that to ever be the case, it's like to be able to lock down based on an, an AI, now that also has some scary connotations. <laughs> But, okay, mm. I, I would say, like, human-based security, <laughs> like like, human security is always going to be necessary, but also yes. it's kind of easy to pull the wool over somebody's eyes if you know exactly how to socially yeah. interact, right? So to have AI kind of as a backup, not as the only. Okay, yeah, is, maybe that's it. Yeah. Right? That's good, right? To, to, so think of it, that makes me think, okay, so so my immediate thought was, oh, AI being able to lock down all the doors, maybe that's 
maybe that's dangerous. What if it was instead an alerting system? I, this is yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. But you think about the, the security guard or security person watching 300 monitors in the security room. Mm -hmm. And what if they don't catch what's happening on this monitor because they're looking at this monitor? Right. What yeah. if the AI could light it up red and say, burr, 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 something's yeah. going on here? And it could be something, really, that's not e that doesn't even um, incite panic for people. Like, what if the the triggered response is just something that comes across the hall and says, you know, under construction or, you know, it, it <laughs> happens all the time up here, then. Right. So, like... <laughs> but uh, what is it cool about this is that, you know, f for for us here in Canada, this is a, a local story for us. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. in the Metro Toronto Convention Center all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I fly out through Pearson often for work, and it's like, this is kind of neat. I'm excited to actually see this put into play mm -hmm. and to see, do I even notice it? Yeah. Right. I mean, not that I'm going to, you know, try to test it, <laughs> but, but like to see, like walk in and go, oh, yeah, okay, there's that sensor. And, oh, there's that. Like just to see if I can pick up on it or sure. if, does it just become part of everyday life? It's, it's kind of neat. But what's interesting about it is that it's before you enter the airport. Yes. Yeah. It, because, yeah. I mean, when you get to those security checkpoints, you go through all the steps, but this is kind of like a pre-screening before you even get in there mm -hmm. to protect hmm. everybody who's checking in for their flights. And that's where the massive load of people are. And it just flights in this this particular scenario. But Oh, yeah. yeah. There's can thousands I, of people that I, could be in the lobbies all at once. I Oh, sorry. Can you? No, you go ahead. Oh, have, sorry. Just don't let me lose my thought. I'm okay. I wanted to speak to the privacy side of things where they mm -hmm. said w there's a little skeptical about the fact that faces aren't recognized or recognizable. I'm wondering what actually you would see on a scan. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. That, for me, would be interesting. Well, you're not seeing. The AI is the AI interpreting is data and yeah. saying, okay, this person, there's some. So my thought is, could this also, not only the positive effect of knowing that, hey, that person is carrying a weapon, but could this also help to prevent um, stereotyping and, um, and racial profiling and... Mm -hmm. um, and falsely accusing or falsely stopping somebody. Right. You know based what? Based on those kinds of things. You know what? I bet it would also help too. It would diminish attempts n with people knowing right. that yeah. the the technology is integrated yep. in. It might take. Uh, say somebody was going to target an airport, they're not going to target Pearson because yeah. they know that Pearson has this AI. Mm -hmm. what, from a you know, a local perspective on this. I'm also going, does, does this really need to go into Pearson? Like, is there more going on well, than I realize? Proactive, <laughs> like, right? Well, it's I get proactive. that, but it yeah. does Let's make, not me, wait until does it make happens. me wonder, like, okay, so they're piloting this. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a reason for it? And, it, and, uh, and it just makes me go, well, they do a really good job if that's the case, because you never see anything mm. go down at Pearson, yeah, yeah. Or at like, least the, the amount huh. of times that I've been there. So, to know that this is just an added layer of security that maybe is going to be never used would be great. But if it is going to cut down on stuff, I'm going, wow, that, well done. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know now it was an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's true. It's, it's cool. It's very uh, cool. Sasha, can I jump on to the cryptocurrency report just to sure. let our viewers know kind of where things are standing? Absolutely. Um, as of October 9th, 2019, this is what CoinGecko tells us. Bitcoin, Jeff, is on the rise once again. We're up $325.91 US, nice. which brings us to $8,587.45 per coin. Cool. Facebook Libra still not tra trading. Uh, Litecoin is at 5908, gaining just a few bucks. Ethereum is uh, doing pretty well as well at $191.42, up from 177 last week. Monero is uh, holding steady at 5582. And Scala, one of the small little uh, micro coins, is losing again just a little bit at 0 0.32 ten thousandths of a cent. Turtle coin, on the other hand, is uh, gaining the same amount almost uh, at 0 0.26 ten thousandths of a cent. Is Scala the one that kept changing its name? Yeah, it was Stellite and then it was Torque and then right. it became Scala. So. so it's still on the downward yeah. trajectory. Like, yeah. It makes me wonder if this is really as a result of switching those names. Oh, I'm sure. Like if people have lost people stop trading in it. 
that's pro- part Prob- of the problem. Probably. Right? You lose confidence in a coin that doesn't have stability. One of the things, uh, uh, looking at micro coins, turtle coin has been consistent. Yes. And it's been stable. And because of that, it's oh, and and their logo is a turtle shell, oh, it's which so is adorable. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the win. Um, but but r- really, I mean, that gives you confidence in the micro coin and being a micro coin. There's not a lot, there's no risk basically. It's yeah. not not like you're going to buy ten billion of them, but y- you can mine them because they're so plentiful, and you can get it on consumer hardware still, and and that's still a possibility. But the thing to remember about cryptocurrency is that the market is always open and it's always changing. It's Mm -hmm. very volatile. And I mean, like from right now at this very moment to 10 minutes from now and even overnight, it's going to change completely and flip on its head. So Mm -hmm. you really have to make sure that you're only investing and spending um, what you can afford to lose because you, quite frankly, are very possibly going to lose it. It's up and down all the time. But hey, if you get gains, then that's that's. Uh, a powerful thing, but also there's uh, plotting or holding mm-hmm. and, and investing in the future and, and holding that and trusting that, hey, Bitcoin's going to be worth more one day. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're going to see as soon as Libra starts trading as well. That's mm-hmm. true. You know, big investments com- coming into Libra, which is going to then very quickly boost the, uh, the Libra economy and cause it to go up in value as well. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm in charge of all of the tech around here. Sorry about that teleprompter, but you did all right, so hey, well thanks. done. Yeah. And I'm Jeff Weston, and I just stand here. <laughs> He's here for the comic effect. I read manuals. <laughs> I read the instructions. <laughs>